To all the highly professional game players, the hard-working test engineers. I am Big Doug, the lead creator of Primitive Society Simulator. I still extend my highest respect to you all. This video is about the development log of Primitive Society Simulator from August to December. Our game will soon be available for early access on Steam. Let's take a look at it. First, please play the tutorial. PSS still has some unique mechanisms, it's not all copied from RimWorld. And it's not to say that if you're very familiar with the previous Demo 4, you'll definitely be able to play Demo 5, there will be some changes to some extent. The introduction and instruction of unique mechanisms are all included in this brand new tutorial. There are mechanisms for taming animals, gathering medicine, rescuing patients, giving birth to offspring, accumulating knowledge, making inventions, and creations, teaching and passing on knowledge, and so on. All these gameplay elements are introduced in detail in this tutorial. The advantage of this tutorial is that for example, if you don't know how to get a child to apprentice, you can come and play this level. It's very targeted and you can find it. The downside of this tutorial is that if you haven't played the tutorial beforehand and you want to learn while playing, when you want to see the tutorial, you need to interrupt the game to consult it. You can't search for it at any time during the game, so there's still room for improvement in the whole guide. We'll continue to optimize this and we hope everyone can give us more feedbacks. Then there's the difficulty adjustment with quite a few options to adjust, such as the amount of food dropped, the speed of animal respawn, the number of locusts, etc. Beginners are recommended to start with the easy difficulty. If you just want to create wonders, then peace is very suitable for you. The entire AI has undergone significant adjustments. During the previous Steam Next Fest, many players reported bugs. For example, the AI was supposed to herd sheep, but ended up collecting eggs. After picking a handful of grass, it ran home even though it wasn't fully loaded. The doctor, who was supposed to be moving patients, ended up leaving the seriously injured person behind and went to have dinner when it was 7 pm. Many of these bugs are related to the AI. So now, in order to make the AI better, we have refined the division of labor for the AI, and added a lot of automation options. The part that hasn't changed is that there are still 1 to 4 priority levels. Tasks with a priority level of 1 will be done first. If two tasks both have a priority level of 1, the one on the left will be done first. Next is the key point, that is, foraging, husbandry, crafting, food preparation, and herbs, have been divided into several sub-works, which can more accurately control the priority level. For example, slaughter the marked sheep first, then go herding. After enough wood has been collected, don't use it to build sheds, but ensure that there are enough tools. You can see what they are currently doing on both the character's head and the character interface. Then there is the control of production quantity. You can open this priority menu, set the target for resource collection and stop collecting once the target is reached. The priority order of crafting tables and buildings can also be adjusted in the priority menu. For example, if I want to sew clothes first instead of crafting flint tools, I can move the clothing workbench to the top. The target for automatic hunting can also be adjusted in the priority menu. For example, whether the lamb is to be caught or directly hunted for its meat can be adjusted. Hunting has also added markers. You can select and then mark as hunting or capturing cubs. Collection has the same operation. This marker will ignore the setting of the upper limit of quantity. You can right-click to make a temporary assignment which allows the villagers to do it immediately. However, once it is completed, for example, all the tools that this entire workbench needs to make, then this temporary assignment will disappear. Regarding the changes to the animal corral, it used to be a fixed size, but now you can pull out an animal corral yourself. The larger the corral, the more livestock it can accommodate. If it's too small and there's not enough space, there will be a debuff that reduces growth and output. Now you can set up the bed yourself. For example, next to the sheep corral, you can put a small house and then put the shepherd's bed here. Then his house and the sheep pen are put together. The above are some important AI changes. The intelligence of AI has no upper limit and can always be smarter. Everyone should always feel that it is not smart enough, but after the changes, it will be somewhat better than before. I am waiting for your feedback and then we will continue to optimize. Next is the gameplay of the battlefield divided into battlefield support and terrain city defense. Let's talk about battlefield support first. The first is the morale of our army. We need to beat the war drums to maintain morale and prevent our warriors from fleeing the battlefield. 
Then there is medical support. The most convenient gameplay is that when fighting, select 1 to 3 people who do not participate in the battle. Set their medical work priority to 1. So they will form a temporary medical team and will automatically rescue the wounded on the battlefield and carry them back for medication. Finally, it is about striking the morale of the enemy. Especially in the later years, when there are many enemies, you can't rely on stacking equipment and numbers to win. You need beasts like mammoths or saber-toothed tigers to deter them. This is the current gameplay of battlefield support and there is still a lot of room for improvement. There are mainly three points. Now any tribal member doing medical work has no difference. In theory, it should be that the higher the medical knowledge, the more diseases and psychological problems they have seen and they can better handle these jobs. Before, some players mentioned that intelligence reduces fear which is actually unreasonable. I agree. I am considering changing it to medical knowledge reduces fear. If this logic continues to develop, doctors should become the advanced knowledge group in this tribe and become leaders, which is also in line with history. The second point is that there is still no way to conduct any professional military training. That is, people cannot leave labor works and train as specialized soldiers or military households. But this is related to the gameplay behind, because such people must have a higher status than other tribal members. Finally, carrying medicine and dealing with injuries on the battlefield in a timely manner. This kind of gameplay is not yet supported. Okay, these are the parts about battlefield support. Next is the part about terrain city defense. Now you can dig mountains and build mountains. Remote weapons will increase range and damage when warriors stand on high ground. The altar is high and the mood bonus will be higher when performing rituals. For the wonder building players, you can also build more natural looking, curved, three-dimensional buildings. The current terrain system the regret is that digging holes is very difficult. Just like going medieval, the workload of this gameplay is very large. So there is no development plan for the time being. And it is not yet possible to fill or dredge the waterway, but this workload is okay. It will be considered to be completed in the next step. Now AI can also build the fortress. There is not much to say about this. It is necessary to dismantle the AI's fortress. You can consider establishing an armory and prepare close combat and long-range weapons to deal with different situations. Building the high tower to strike morale is also playable. The modification of the entire battlefield is probably the above. Difficulty can be adjusted at will and you can play however you like according to your own ideas. Then the process and tasks in the later years were optimized. As mentioned in the previous video, there are gameplay such as floods and forming an alliance in the later years. In this version, this gameplay will be more complete than before. When the game reaches the middle and late years, younger Dryas impact hypothesis will appear. The entire map will be covered by ice and snow. Grass, wild fruits, and wild wheat will no longer there. The wild animals on the map will only be left with mammoths. So you need to reserve food to get through this period. If you raise sheep, you also need to prepare their grass feed, or if you raise them as reserve food, that's fine. After the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, there is a long period of heavy rain and flooding. This gameplay is currently done quite roughly. There will be no floods in the player's tribe, but it will consume some raincoats. However, other tribes on the map will need the player's help. You need to send people out to complete this water control task and help them rebuild their homes. After success, the tribes you've helped will send people to deliver metal material. If you give up, the affected tribe will disappear permanently on the map. Finally, there's the process of forming alliance. After resisting invasions, surviving the ice age and rescuing floods, and then your population size has reached a huge 50 people. At this time, you will enter the process of forming alliance. You need to invite other tribes to discuss and establish an alliance. This UI has written requirements. First, build a meeting hall, then invite three who respect you, invite ten who are friendly, invite three who are hostile, send messengers to go, wait for the leaders of other tribes to come to the meeting, sit together and express their opinions, the meeting decides to establish an alliance and then they will go back and wait for you to prepare the alliance ceremony. This ceremony will require you to build an altar. This is the UI for the requirements of the ceremony. Plan the seats well, choose what to eat for the ceremony, and other tribes in the alliance will melt their weapons into copper materials and give them to you. You need to use these materials to cast bronze cauldrons. 
Finally, the leaders of all tribes will come to your tribe to hold the ceremony of forming the alliance together. Then you need to name the alliance. After the end, everyone will leave one after another. This is the last gameplay process of Demo 5. There are some other gameplay changes that have always been there such as friendly visits, fair trades, and passionate interactions. I have increased their enthusiasm a bit, so that everyone can feel the welcome of the wilderness natives to foreigners. On the map, you can change your destination at any time. You can do several trades and hunting tasks at once and then go home. Many test engineers complained before that the task conditions were strange and could not be completed. This has now been changed. You can try it. Another one that everyone has given more feedback is automatic pairing. Chickens and sheep are now a male will pair with multiple females, so this automatic pairing is done. Dogs, pigs, cows, tigers, elephants, fishing birds. These animals are more special animal pals, need strict control of the number, so currently still maintain one-to-one -one pairing. An additional camera mode for taking pictures has also been added. Now every piece of land is playable, watching the sun, moon and stars. The future development plan includes making these also a gameplay. At that time, you can try to impersonate a prophet and formulate a calendar. Only the clouds in the sky don't know how to play. The above is the devlog of Primitive Society Simulator from August to December. So, subscribe, comment, discord, steam review, waiting for all the player to review. This is the big dove of YSH.